Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 4 and we're going to focus on the subtopic of 4.4 intermolecular forces of attraction and the subtopic of 4.5 metallic bonding. So we're going to discuss question 2, 3, 4, 6 and 7 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 2, we need the we need to name the type of the vendable forces that exist between the molecule for each of the following species. So we have iodine, we have the dihydrogen sulfide as well as benzene. So the thing that you need to do is you need to draw the Lewis structure, determine and draw the molecular geometry according to Vesper, and draw the bond dipole and then determine the result in the dipole. And then if mu is equal to zero, then it is non-polar. If mu is not equal to zero, then it is a polar molecule. The similar thing as what you have learned in the previous subtopic. Okay, so from here, you need to follow this step here. So once you settle all that, at the end, you're going to have the molecule to be something like this. So iodine and iodine came from the same type of atom. So when they came from the same type of atom, they're going to have the similar electronegativity. So they are not polar bond and they're not going to having any dipole moment. So the dipole moment is supposed to be zero and it is a non-polar molecule. So when it is a non-polar molecule, then it can only have London dispersion forces. Okay, and now you're going to do for H2S. So for H2S, you need to calculate the total number of valence electrons. For example, two hydrogen going to be two electrons and then sulfur going to be six electrons. So you're going to have eight electrons in total. And then sulfur going to be the central atom and then it's going to make two bonds with the hydrogen at the terminal atom. So minus four electrons. So you're going to have four electrons at, at this part here. So the four electrons will be used in order to complete the octet at the central atom. Okay, and since it have a class of AB2E2, it's supposed to have a structure of a band shape to be looking something like this. Okay, and as what you know that the electronegativity will move towards hydrogen and it will move towards the hydrogen. And as a result, the resultant dipole is going to be produced here and mu is equal is not equal to zero because the dipole moment cannot the bond dipole cannot be cancelled out. And as a result, it is a polar molecule. And for a polar molecule, it can exist two types of van der Waals forces, which is first dipole dipole forces and second London dispersion forces. Okay, and for C6, H6, uh, the easiest clue here is that you know that they are hydrocarbon. Okay, so hydrocarbon is a molecule that consists of carbon and hydrogen only. And as what you have learned, carbon and hydrogen bond is non-polar. Okay, so since they only they only have C and H only, which is hydrocarbon, then they are essentially a non-polar molecule. And it's looking like a structure to be like this. Okay, but it's very, very difficult to draw it using the structure. But the keyword that you can take is from here. The CH bond is non-polar and hydrocarbon always non-polar. Okay, so they are basically non-polar molecule and it can only have London dispersion for cells. All right. So that's for question number two. For question number three, we need to state the factors that influence the strength of the vandal forces. So there are three factors. First, we have the molecular size or the molecular weight. Second, we have molecular shape. And third, we have the molecular polarity. Okay. And for question B, which molecule has a higher boiling point? The bromine or the iodine chloride? So if you were to draw it roughly, bromine and bromine and iodine and chlorine, you can generally know that the iodine chloride here will be more polar because the electron density is going to be moved towards chlorine more. Okay, because chlorine, bromine, iodine, right? So in group 17, so down the group, the electronegativity decreases. So chlorine is more electronegative than iodine and hence a dipole moment will go towards the chlorine. However, Br and Br, they have the same electronegativity. So the electron distribution is going to be the same. And as a result, they're not going to be a polar molecule. It's going to be non-polar. Okay, as mu is not is because mu is equal to zero. In this case, the bond dipole cannot cancel out, 
So mu is not equal to zero, and hence it is a polar molecule. Okay, and as a polar molecule, it has a dipole dipole forces, and hence as a higher boiling point. So you can say that Br2, which is bromine, is a non-polar molecule. Meanwhile, the ICL here is a polar molecule. And the forces between bromine molecule from one bromine to another bromine is a London dispersion forces. However, the forces that arises between iodine and chlorine are the dipole level forces since they are polar molecule. And the dipole level forces are essentially stronger than the, than the dispersion forces. And hence, more energy is needed to overcome the stronger forces in ICL. As a result, the ICL will has a higher boiling point in comparison to the bromine molecule. Okay. Now for tutorial question four, we have our ethanol here, and then we have our metal ether, and then they have the same molar mass. So which of these will have a higher boiling point? So for this case, um, we need to be able to identify the structure. So for C2H5, it's essentially looking like this. OH here. Okay, so as what you can see here, they have the OH bond in the ethanol. However, in the metal ether, you're going to have the structure to be something like this. Okay, so as what you can see, the Ethanol here will have a hydrogen bonding because it can make a hydrogen bonding with another molecule of ethanol. Okay, and then you just continue it. But this one, they only have a dipole, dipole forces as well as the London dispersion forces. So they're going to have both, which is London dispersion and the dipole, dipole forces because it's going to have a structure like a band here okay and as a result the one that has a hydrogen bonding will have a higher boiling point okay so the explanation here i've just written it here for your reference so i say that the metal ether is a polar molecule so this one is the metal ether and it has a dipole dipole as well as the london dispersion forces which is both of these forces here are the example of van der waals Meanwhile, the ethanol will have a hydrogen bonding. And the hydrogen bonding, as what you have learned, is stronger than the van der Waals forces. And as a result, more energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces in ethanol. Thus, the ethanol has a higher boiling point than the metal ether. Now, for question 4C, the ethanol, which is C2H5, has a molar mass of 46, which is boils at 78 degrees Celsius. But water, which has a lower molar mass, boils at higher temperature. Why is that? Molar mass ethanol lagi tinggi, tapi boiling point dia rendah. Water, boiling, uh, water, molar mass dia rendah, tapi boiling point tinggi. So, how can this happen? So, essentially, what happened here is that the ethanol can form hydrogen bonding. But of course, water can form hydrogen bonding as well. So the difference between those two is that the water molecule can form more hydrogen bonding than the ethanol, which is the alcohol. So because the water can form more hydrogen bonding per molecule, so they have a higher boiling point. So the thing that you can say is that both ethanol, which is heavier, and water differs in their molar mass but both can form hydrogen bonding. However, water can form more hydrogen bonding than ethanol, as what you have learned in lecture, that they can form four hydrogen bonding per water molecule. Okay. Meanwhile, ethanol can only form one hydrogen bond per molecule. So the higher number of hydrogen bond in water causes a stronger strength of intermolecular forces overall, and as a result, more energy is needed to break the higher hydrogen bond in H2O, which is in water. And due, of that, due to that, the water has a higher boiling point than the eta not. Okay, so that's all for question 4. Now for question 6, we need to explain why ice is less dense than water. 
So to understand more about this, it is better for us to draw the arrangement of the water molecule in ice. So the arrangement of water molecule in ice is that they're going to maximize the hydrogen bonding and they're going to be arranged in tetrahedral manner. So as what you know that water will have an unusual ability to form extensive hydrogen bonding network in which when the water being cooled into ice, which is a solid water, they're going to arrange themselves in a tetrahedral arrangement in such a way that it can maximize the amount of hydrogen bonding between them. And as a result, you can see that they're going to have an empty space here. So this empty space here is known as the open structure. Lagi banyak rongga udara yang terhasil sewaktu pembentukan ais. Okay? And as what you can see is that when there's a lot of volume or empty space here, volume increases and as a result, the density is going to be decreases as well. In which you can relate the formula of density, which is density is equal to m over mass over volume. So when the volume increases, the density decreases. And that is why ice is less dense than water here. And that is because when you buy your drink at a cafeteria or something, you can see that the ice floats on top of the water because it is less than. Alright? Now, for question 7, we need to define the metallic bond and then we need to describe the formation of metallic bond in aluminium by using the electron C model. So, in order for us to visualize this better, let us look into the electron C model here. So we need to draw the aluminium 3 plus ion and then it's going to have the valence electron which is delocalized and free to move. So this is the positively charged metal ion which is the aluminium and then we have the delocalized valence electron that are free to move inside this array. So the metallic bond we can define is we can define that as an electrostatic force between a positively charged metallic ion and the sea of electrons that are free to move. And the bonding electrons are delocalized over the entire crystal, which can be imagined as an array of the positive ion immersed in the sea of the delocalized valence electron. And this is how the electron C model are, looks like. Okay, now for question 7b, we need to explain why the boiling point of calcium is higher than the potassium. So as what you know that the calcium will have two valence electron and the potassium has one valence electron. So it has a higher positive charge because Ca2 plus here in comparison to K plus. So you can say that it has a higher positive charge and hence will have a greater attraction for the valence electron in comparison to potassium which only has a positive one. And as a result, more energy is needed to overcome the metallic bond in the calcium in comparison to the potassium. And that is why the boiling point of calcium is higher than potassium. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!